Well, hello and uh, welcome to uh, Carlisle Ambulance Station. Now, as you know, uh, over the last few months when we've been recording the church services, the sermon has been in a different location each week. Since we've got back into church and uh, live streaming now, many people have said how much they've missed the recorded services. And one of the things that they've missed is being the sermon slot in a different location. Well, I was invited to come to the ambulance station by Dave. By Dave is a, a paramedic and he's also now a member of St. Aidan's Church. That's and he right. said, we'd love you to come to the station. So, Got right, we'll take it when you're off her. And Becky is with us, and Becky is a technician uh, with the ambulance service. So I'm going to chat to them about their work because, from my point of view, I can do the Now I say that because I think I speak on the call of the city when I say that because you are so well respected in the work that you do. And throughout this lockdown period, uh, we've relied on people like yourself staff in the hospital, the GP service, and many of the people who have kept the vital services going. And as far as you're concerned, when somebody is really ill and an ambulance is sent for, you're the first person to see and they are vital situations and you're a kind of So your job would be to reassure them. So, Becky, something you would like to say about that particular aspect of the role when you're speaking for the first time in your life and I think we're definitely more aware of the fact that relatives, friends can't accompany them into hospital. When the pandemic first kicked off, I was on the road, but at the moment I'm currently pregnant, so I'm no longer on operational duties. I'm on station part of the staff of the And but I think you're certainly more aware when, when I was on the road that you need to be a bit more compassionate, a bit more empathetic, just a bit more sensitive to their needs. And as I'm sure Dave does and everyone else in the service, you treat everyone like you would your own family. So I know that I would not like to think of my family in that situation. So I try to be a bit more sensitive towards their situation, absolutely. And that, that sensitivity and that reassurance is not just because of the pandemic, that's something you've always done regardless. Absolutely. Many people have spoken to me over the years and when I come to visit them and they've been going on and they've said, oh, the ambulance goes so lovely and they put me at ease. And that's, that's it. Yeah. So they arrive at the hospital probably, the blood pressure not quite as high as so <laughs> it might be because of your reassurance. And Dave, now ask, just asking you as well, uh, during the pandemic though, uh, and we're still really experiencing it, we still haven't come out of it, we still haven't come out of it. How do you know it's actually more fearful and more tense than we were before? Absolutely, I think that there's always that awareness and that fear, even if someone's called us for a reason unrelated to the pandemic, there is a, a fear of the unknown and a fear of that isolation. Obviously, at the moment, all the hospitals are trying to avoid people coming in who aren't patients. So it's very rare that someone can come in and accompany a patient to hospital. And obviously, that's got to be terrifying. Um, when we take them away, sometimes we, we worry that we might be the last link with their home, yes. as in the last people they've seen in their home address apart from their loved ones. And the thing is, it's with this with this horrible disease is a lot is still unknown and a lot was unknown in the earlier stages. As time has progressed we get to know more about how the virus affects people and obviously there are now new treatments that are helping those with the virus. However, oh, we've got the way the vehicle needs access. <laughs> Life is going on around us. Oh, he's going to say that. Is 
So yeah, it, it's we we are aware that we've got not just a, a, a medical responsibility, but a, a sort of compassionate responsibility to look after um, not just the patient, but their relatives and their friends and loved ones who are also going to be absolutely terrified about the unknown and what's going on. And that's an important part of our role, as as Becky said. Actually. A lot of what we do is treating people with kindness and compassion the way you want to remember your own family to be treated. And that's often 90% of the battle, is, yeah. is, is that over the clinical skills, it's, it's really important. their social construct, their family, their friends, their loved ones, their church, their youth group, their pub, whatever it may be, has been to them what they can use to manage their mental health. And when that's been withdrawn and their sphere has, has closed down, that's when maybe some latent mental health problems that these people have suffered with and they haven't had a chance to access services because they've not had the need to have come to the fore, which is obviously very sad. Now obviously at the moment our colleagues in mental health are very busy dealing with that, so especially 
at weekends and the evenings when some services may not be as easy to access, often the ambulance service becomes that first point of call for people. Um, I think we are definitely seeing, and we will probably continue to see, uh, as a secondary fallout from the coronavirus pandemic is the effect it's going to have on pay, uh, people's mental health long term. And getting social constructs that can help people back into place is going to be really important. It is, it is trying to get people back into everyday life in whatever shape or form that's going to be because we just don't know what the moment do it. And we've got to get through this winter. I like to think we can get through the winter without any huge spikes that are being forecast. Because I think if that was to be the case, come next spring people will be more So yeah, let's hope we can get through it. But you know, the healing industry, you are part of the healing industry, is so crucial to everyone. And, and Jesus, of course, was a great healer. He would go out and he would reach the sick, he would reach the dying, and he would restore people to, to health. And he was in demand. And wherever he went, there would be a big crowd. And often they would bring the sick to him. He would know one who touched him. He would feel something go out of him. And he, he always would have compassion on, on the sick and it often said that uh, Paul had brought the paralyzed man to him and Jesus, this is the words they use in the Bible, Jesus had compassion on them and immediately wanted to reach out and, and to heal them and that's what you were doing, you were, you were giving compassion and you know, I'm, now you tell all your colleagues this what I'm about to say, I like you to angels. So can you just think of yourself as an angel now? Not with wings, but because the angels are God's messengers and, and you know, they're not crappy wings paying off, so don't see that. But often they're, they're there to give comfort and hope. So when people say, oh, he or she is an angel, uh, they're likening it to someone who's come out to give compassion and care. And you truly are angels in our community who go out and have compassion on those who are here. And you are doing the work that God wants us to do to reach out and to love and care for one another. So thank you on behalf of everyone for what you do. Really it's a huge thank you to all of you for this wonderful work. Thank you for taking part today. Thank you. All the very best. <laughs> when, when, when's baby due? December the 27th. Oh, we're being Christmas baby. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> well, no. 23rd of December, you might have that to aim for. You just yeah. don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm, well, I'm sure all will go well. Here to you and, and uh, good luck for that as thank well. Thank you very much. And thank you so much.